it's going to record. So did that make sense where we finished off where when oh, we drew I this a question about mm -hmm. it. Um, so for the first chair confirmation, mm -hmm. um, so I know that the ethyl is up and the methyl is down, but how did you know to make the methyl? Um, well, what did I tell you? When oh, it comes to oh, draw these. Um, it I, doesn't matter how you draw it the first time, right? Just uh -huh. be consistent. So I could have drawn the ethyl here, right? And so one, two, three, if I'm counting clockwise, one, two, three, and then this would be the methyl, right? Okay. And then if I did my chair flip like this, again, it doesn't matter how I structure it or number it, just as long as I'm consistent. So this outermost one is this one here, right? So then going the same direction as that happens for some reason, like this, this is would be that. And so this would be my ethyl now, right? So one, two, three, and now this would be my methyl, right? Okay. It doesn't matter where I start. That's why I keep saying just be consistent. So it wouldn't matter which one is axial or equatorial or if they're both axial or both equatorial? just as long as it's like. Well, when I'm drawing them, it doesn't matter where I start the drawing part. But now if I was to erase all of the stuff that isn't necessary, so numbers. And so which of these now is my, if I was to call this A and this B, which one of these is the more stable one? Who says A? Who says B? What is the larger group, ethyl or methyl? Ethyl. So you want your larger group to always be in what? The axial or the equatorial? Equatorial. Equatorial. So that's why A is my more stable one. It doesn't matter how you draw it, where you draw it. You always want your biggest group to be in the equatorial. Okay. So Matthew, what is happening here with this? What does that tell me? Does this right here tell me if it's axial or equatorial, the, the wedge? It's telling you that it's coming out of the page. It tells you it's coming out of the page, which means that when I draw my ring, it's going up, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so does it matter if I draw it up the first time, up axial or up equatorial? Um, I think that does matter, nope. right? it Not when I first draw it. It doesn't matter, because remember, this is why I say be consistent. So if I was to clear this like this and I was to draw it again, right? Like, so draw my, and I apologize as my rings are getting worse as the night goes on. They're always terrible, so that's okay. I could have drawn this right off the bat. Right? Yes. And it, And so now, did it matter, Matthew, which one I drew, that, that I drew it equatorial or axial first? No. No, just as long as it's going up. That's all I have to do, right? But when I do my ring flip, I know that I'm going to draw both versions of it. So it doesn't matter how you draw the first one, just as long as this is consistent with what they give you, and this is consistent with what you drew before, right? They have to follow the same you know, you're still going in the same like clockwise if you're numbering, there's the correct spacing, they are going up or down, right? That's all, that's what I mean by consistent. So in this case, the, the more stable one would be the one on the right? Yep, because my ethyl is in the equator, right? And to have just the real mind fuck with you guys, because that's, I enjoy messing with kids when I teach organic because organic is the one, organic is the one chemistry that I, can just run circles around all of my students the first like eight months like gen chem kids catch up pretty quickly but in organic i could have drawn this um right off the bat i could have drawn That's the same thing, right? It This seems like counterintuitive probably to what I was drawing, but it's still the same thing. I'm still following the same pattern. Which one is the more stable one, the one to the left or the one to the right? The one to the right, right? Because my ethyl group, it doesn't matter, right? How I draw these, 
just as long as I'm consistent. And just for fun, because this is me showing off, if I wanted to draw the same ring, but I'm like, well, I'm gonna draw it from the below perspective because I can. So if I was drawing it from the below perspective, like I flipped over the ring like that, I could have been like, oh, well, this could be my ethyl like that. And then uh, this could be my, uh, this could be my methyl. And then if I wanted to go like that, then this would have been my ethyl. And this would have been my methyl. And that's the exact same thing. I just flipped it over. As long as it's consistent, right? And I know that this is really messing with you right now, but it doesn't matter. These are the exact same things, right? So does that end, kind of answer your question, Matthew? Yeah, yeah, that cleared it up, I think. Yep, so just when you draw your first chair, all you have to keep in mind is the correct spacing. Um, and then, uh, so the correct spacing, right? So like we have one, two, three. When I draw my ring, I just need to keep that ordering the same, right? And I'm, and I'm counting here clockwise. So when I draw my ring, I wanna make sure that I count the same way, but clockwise, does that make sense? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. Be, be consistent. All right. All right. So to draw the other, so this is basically what we're doing, right? We're drawing our chair confirmations. And so here, this is it, right? You're just getting these two chair confirmations. And in the actual science of it, molecules are always moving, right? And so at some point, it's going to be in this confirmation, maybe like 80% of the time, the one to the right. On the left side, you know, it's, wow, that's, that's weird. Like it might be in this form 80% of the time, it might be in this form 20% of the time, right? It just depends, but there's always going, you know, there more often than not, there's going to be a preferred. If they were both ethyl groups, go ahead. Would there be a preferred confirmation if instead of one being a methyl and one being an ethyl, but they're both methyls, would there be a preferred confirmation? No, because there would be no difference, right? I would always have one methyl in the axial, I would have one in the equatorial, and it wouldn't matter. When you have different groups, that's when it starts coming into play. All right. And so here, when naming distributed, so if you have a di substituted cycloalkane, right? If you have two substituents, I can call them cis if they are on the same side, like that. And I don't know why it does that, but if they're on the same side and I'm referring to just two, it's di substituted, it's cis if they are on opposite sides, it's trans. Okay, and so this is gonna come back to when we talk about double bonds, but this is just something where you say it's, it's cis. So if you're, if you're doing the name, cis, one, two, dimethylcyclohexane, trans, one, two, dimethylcyclohexane. Normally it doesn't matter, but as we are getting into naming compounds and we care about 3D more, stereo, isomers, and other stuff like that, we have to start putting in these, uh, you know, demarcations to clearly state what type of molecule we draw, right? So if I told Gwen to draw me one, two, dimethylcyclohexane, and I asked Max to draw me one, two, dimethylcyclohexane, one of you might draw the cis one, one of you might draw the trans one, right? You don't know which way you would do it. And so by telling you this, it clearly, these are two very different compounds, right? They're the same. These are actually, um, these are confirmations that are um, structural isomers. They're now connected in different ways. Um, but this is just the idea, right? We wanna make sure we have this. If I had three groups on this ring, would I use cis or trans? Like if it was tri-substituted? No, you can only do it the cis and trans when it's di substituted. So, is isn't organic nomenclature fun? I know you guys love it. All right, so each compound exists as two e uh, equilibrating chairs, spending more time in the more stable chair conformation. So, for my first one, is there a preference here? Is there a preference here between A or B?
There wouldn't be one, correct? Because of the same groups? Yep, so they're 50%, right? So here, one's gonna be an axial, one's gonna be an equatorial, all right? What about here? Is there a preference between this one A and B? Who says yes? Who says no? Who says maybe? I say no, but I might be wrong because it seems suspicious that like I would. What do you say, Max? Wouldn't it be? Yep, because like, be remember, better? what did we want our substituents to be in? Axial or equatorial? Equatorial. So in B, both of them are in equatorial, right? So if I can get everything into equatorial, much preferred. This is going to be like 100% of the time versus zero. Because in the situation on the left, right, one is axial, one is equatorial always. So there's no difference there. Here, you always want them to be in equatorial if they can be in equatorial. And since you can get both in equatorial versus none in equatorial, that one's going to be that. Make sense? Melissa, you look a little unsure. No, yeah, I get it now. Okay. It makes sense. Yep. Okay, and so just in case, yeah, don't worry about it. So what is the maximum number of methyl groups that can be in the equ equatorial position at the same time? What is the maximum number? I got three from Gwen. Max says three, Matthew says two, and Melissa says, who knows, right? And so this is, if I was to draw just my um, chair confirmation really crappily, right? If I was to draw um, up, down, what do you notice about my equatorial? What do they do? What's true about the directionality as I go from carbon to carbon to carbon? They alternate, right? Equatorials alternate. So up could be in this could be equatorial. Down, this could be an equatorial. Up, this could be the equatorial position here would be a dash. The equatorial position here would be a wedge, right? So this hydrogen is going to be in there. And then this one would be my equatorial, right? So they have to alternate. Does that make sense? So you can predict how many you can based on if they alternate or not. Melissa, I see you're trying to wrap your head around that. Yeah, I just, I don't know where like three came from. Well, what's true as I go from carbon to carbon to carbon, right? My equatorial position is going down like this, right? On this carbon here. Mm -hmm. Which way is my equatorial going here? I should be going up. What about here? Down. And here? Up. So as I alternate, right? They change wedge, dash, wedge, dash, wedge, dash, wedge, dash. This should be a wedge, right? If it's gonna alternate, dash, if it's gonna alternate. So how many of these alternate in this uh, structure on the ring that we have? Is it just three and not four because like the other one's like not right next to it? Well, it's not that it's right next to it. They have to alternate, remember? So like if, it, if it's up equatorial here, the next one's gonna be down equatorial. Yeah. So up equatorial, down equatorial, up equatorial, down equatorial, up equatorial, down equatorial. They they alternate, right? So is this one going up on the dash, that CH3? No. Nope, so it can't be alternating with these three. It's not alternating up, down, up, down, up, down. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so as you go through and practice this, you're gonna see this more and more that they are just alternating between them, right? So. If I had something like this, say this is a wedge here and I had a fluorine, could these two be both equatorial? No, because if they're right next to each other and they're both equatorial, one has to be equatorial, one has to be axial, right? So if I go, if they're next to each other and they're both wedges, they are going to be 
one's axial, one's equatorial. But now, if I look here, this is up. I skip a carbon and I come here, this is up. These can both be equatorial, right? Or they can both be axial. They're gonna do the same like that, right? So then this, this carbon here, these three carbons, right? They alternate. So whatever those are doing, they'll be doing the same. So if this one is equatorial, this one has to be equatorial if it's a wedge, right? So the wedges will all be doing the same thing. The dashes will all be doing the same thing. It's just a repeating pattern. Um, I was going to say, I have to go in a little bit, but I just came up with like an idea for like you to not like have to like upload these to like YouTube. Because like I remember that's what like my um, ecology professor does. She just puts like the link um, on like a Google spreadsheet and she just like has it linked like somewhere and like maybe learn like you can maybe just like email it to us so that like maybe we can't make it. You don't have to like post it on YouTube. We can just like watch that like recording through Zoom. Oh, uh, I don't know if I have the access to the, because you have to have it stored in the cloud and I don't have access to the cloud or not. I'll have to look into that. So, okay. but uploading to YouTube takes me like a minute if I set, if I remember to do it. I want you to remember my memory gone. Don't remember, don't remember anything. Like if any of you and I had a touching going away message, don't remember it. I miss you all. Just kidding. I, I, I do remember stuff, but I, I forget to do something sometimes. So just a reminder. All right. Um, I have to go. So yeah, um, thank you. I will send you a reminder about like possibly upload another recording so I can watch the rest. So yeah, okay. Okay, now I can resume. All right, so now we have this here. It says one way to see if we have the same compound instead of constitutional isomers is to name them. So I guess we're getting into the isomer part. So what is a constitutional isomer? Can anyone give me a definition of a constitutional isomer? Mags. Um, is it like different connectivity? But like it's the same, but a different connectivity. Like for example, like the you're missing, first one. You're missing two words: same blank blank or same blank different connectivities. Same compound. Different same molecular compound. formula. Okay. So you have to have the same number of carbons and hydrogens and whatever else, but they're just connected in a different way. Okay. Right, so I like yes. to think of it as like the Lego problem. If I give you a box of Legos, like I give the exact same box to you and the exact same box to Matthew, and I said, build me something, and you used all of the pieces to build me something, you guys are probably gonna build two different things, but since you're all using the same blocks, they're just arranged differently, they're constitutional isomers. So how would, what would be the easiest way to figure out if something is a constitutional isomer? Um, if they have like the same, like. I guess. The what did same I tell you that all constitutional isomers have to have? Molecular, molecular um, formula. formula. So just figure out what the molecular formula is. And if you figure out what the molecular formula is, that'll tell you if they're the same, but they're drawn different, that they're isomers, right? Okay. So if I was sitting here, I'd go one, two, three, four. So this is C4, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, H10, O, one, two, three, four. C4, 3, 6, 8, 10, H10, O, 1, 2, 3, 4, C4, 3, 5, 7, 9, 10, H10, O, 1, 2, 3, 4, C4, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, H10, O, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, C4, H3, 6, 8, H8, Oh, so how many of these are stereoisomers of each other? Four of them, right? Because four of them have the exact same molecular formula. What is an easier way to determine if something? What do you notice about that last one? The pi bond. The pi bond. If you do not have a pi bond, like here, if you are there any rings or pi bonds in these four? So if you have rings and pi bonds in one and none in another one, or that number doesn't add up, right? Like if you add up the number of pi bonds and rings. So I have zero pi bonds and rings, zero, zero, zero. These aren't necessarily going to be the same isomers, but there is a fighting chance that they are. This one has one pi bond. So this cannot be an isomer with the other four. Does that make sense? 
So you can immediately eliminate one of your answers in case you're taking your exam and you need to just like get a, get a guess as fast as possible. The other way is just to quickly write out the molecular formula. Gwen, how quickly can you write out the molecular formula for one of these? Um, it'd probably take me like a, like a minute because <laughs> I'd have to go through and count. Not like a long time, like actually like 60 seconds. Okay, so but you I could immediately to... eliminate E if you did that. Like if this was just oh. like you had like 30 seconds left on the exam and you could be like, yeah. okay, I'm going to eliminate E, you know, and let's just try that. So yeah, that's what degrees of the saturation is, right? For every degree of unsaturation, you have... Um, you have a ring or a, or a double bond for every ring of unsaturation. Does that make sense? Yeah, so th this is just like the quick easy way of doing that. All right, so all right, answer there is four. Which is our constitution, constitutional isomers of A? Which of these is the constitutional isomer? So this is our, we could do the degrees of unsaturation, but how many rings and double bonds are there in A? Two, right? How many rings and double bonds are in B? Two, how many rings and double bonds are in C? Two, do they all have, do they both have four carbons? Yep, so how many constitutional isomers do I have? Which, which, is, which of these are both B and C constitutional isomers? Is it B, is it C, is what? My guess would be C, but that's conformational. Imagine C if I just did this. The same thing, it's just rotated. So it would be. B. A and B are constitutional isomers, right? So A and C are just the same thing. It's just been rotated around. So welcome to the start of your problems. This is where you have to start manipulating the 3D shape of your molecules. I apologize if I'm the first one telling you this. Mag, would you like me to send you a pizza? Would that make you feel better? I'll send you a pizza. <laughs> yes, that would make me feel better. Okay, I'll send you a pizza. We'll send you some carbs. Carbs are good. Um, okay. But this is the uh, idea here is that um, essentially you just have these rings that you rotate and whatnot. And this is going to be um, B and C are the exact same thing, but B and A, they both have four carbons and they don't have anything besides carbon and hydrogens and they have the same number of um, degrees of unsaturation to a double bond and a ring and a double bond and a ring. So they are going to be constitutional isomers. Does that make sense? So remember a constitutional isomer has to be connected in a different way. All right. So which ones are constitute, which, all right, A is our main one. Which one's a constitutional isomer of A? Which one is a constitutional isomer of A? C. Okay. What do you guys because, say? Or Max, go ahead, sorry. Um, isn't it because of like, there's like a um, ethyl group or yeah, at three and like in C. What's an easy way you can check to see if, if they are isomers or not? Molecular formula. Molecular formula, that's an easy way to see if they can be, but let's go ahead and place with their glasses. This, if I was to name A, is three methyl. Starting here, it's a six, three methyl hexane. If I started here and called this one and I called this six, this is also three methyl hexane, right? So they are the exact same thing because they have the same names. If I started here, called this one and called this five, this is three methyl so far as, or sorry, three ethyl, right? Uh, pentane. So they all have the same number of carbons, but A and B are the exact same thing. A and C are my constitutional isomers. Does that make sense? So this is the one time that naming is going to come into play and help you. 
is that if you're ever unsure, just try to name it and see if they're different or they're the same. You don't look happy, Max. I'm just really bad at naming. Just well, look at it this way. When you name stuff, do you make the same mistake every time? If you try to name them, you may make the same mistake every time. <laughs> and then like, oh, well, these are have the same name. Like, even if it's the incorrect name, right? You might still see that they have the same thing. So try that's that's my workaround to try and figure out. See if they're because they have to have different connectivities, A and B are the same. All right. Um let's see what to say after we're done. How many constitutional ice so are these constitutional isomers of each other or any of these constitutional isomers? So how many degrees of unsaturation does my first one have? One, right, because it has a ring. What about my second one? Two, because it has a ring and a double bond. What about my third one? One, right? So this cannot be a constitutional isomer with anything else, right? because it has a different number of degrees of unsaturation. If you have a different number of degrees of unsaturation, they can't be constitutional isomers. But one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, two, four, six, eight, nine, 12, H12, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, six carbons, three, five, seven, uh, eight, nine, 12, H12. So they have the same molecular formula, they're connected differently. So they are going to be, does that make sense? So just work through it that way. If they have all of the same atoms, like if you look at it, this only has carbon and hydrogen, this only has carbon of hydrogen. If they have the same number of carbons and they only have carbons and hydrogens and they have the same degrees of unsaturation, they have to be constitutional isomers, unless they're the same thing. Are, are we reaching your breaking point for you guys? Are you getting tired? Are your minds saying we're done? Everyone has a limit for chemistry. I have to leave at 7.30 just because I have like a bunch of other homework I have to do for my lab. Um, I'm not even your professor. I don't care what you do. <laughs> I mean, I care a little bit, but all right. So this is just it. So isomers are different compounds that have the same formula, right? Constitutional isomers, same molecular formula, but different constitution. They are connected differently, right? I like to say different connectivity. Stereoisomers, same molecular formula, same constitutional, but they just have a different 3D arrangement, right? So this is the idea now of like my headphones, right? Remember, am I actually breaking anything when I'm putting the headphones tucked in or out? I'm not, if I don't have to break any bonds, it's going to be a stereo isomer like that. That's the way to think about it. If I'm just rearranging it in some way. So my headphones are just all sorts of messed up. That's all right. Okay. So real quick, which of these represent, what does that say, cis isomers? Any idea which of these represent? Okay, so I feel like it's definitely easy to identify um, when they're in like the chair conformation or um, a ring structure. Mm -hmm. But I just like have trouble figuring it out if it's in like a line or a chain. Oh. Okay, so the question here is how many degrees of unsaturation do you have? Just figure that out. So do any of these have more than one degree of unsaturation? Which letter? C. C. C has a triple bond, right? So that's two degrees of unsaturation. So I can immediately eliminate C for my answers. So that's going to eliminate the letter C and the letter E. So this is going to be A, B, uh, A, B, and D. Oh, this is really sad. Something that I never got a chance to do is that I like to give questions where I ask, like, I have a letter, like, choose the correct one, except my answers are like A, B, C, D, and E. And then for B, I would have like A, and I would have F, and so I would have like which letter is the correct one, and it was just super confusing. I never got a chance to do that with you guys. It makes me sad. Never got to torment you that way. But that's the way you can just get through. That's a quick way, right? It's just get through with it. But then you just another. Now that you know that these all have the same levels of degrees of unsaturation, what did I tell you? You should count first. The number of. 
carbons. So if I come here, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And then I just count them. These have eight, this has nine, eight, 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 right? So then I just go through it like that. Does that make sense? Are you okay with that? When she says cis isomers, I'm not entirely sure what she's asking by that. To me, that's a weird question, but. Um, so the answer that she gave us in class was answer D. So I think what she meant is like, which ones have. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this real quick just because the things will start. Come back and I'll give you an explanation. I see what she's saying now.